Good morning, X Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. In Psalm 23, it says, You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I don't know about you, but I'm trusting God for an overflow in your family, an overflow in your workplace, an overflow in your healing, an overflow in your breakthrough. Anything that you're trusting God for, may they be an overflow. So, Father, we welcome you this morning. Would you inhabit our praises in Jesus' mighty name? Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together like this.
more time. Worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. that we need. So Lord, we invite you into this Sunday morning. We invite you into our homes. Lord, come today, Lord, and we thank you that you would manifest yourself and move amongst us, Lord. Father, I pray particularly this morning for those that are in pain this morning, maybe lost loved ones. Lord, we pray for these households that you would strengthen them today. Lord, let them sense the closeness of your presence. And let them know that, Lord, you are for them and not against them. We speak peace to you and healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this day. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, everybody. Well, a very good morning, everyone. It's so good to come to you live again today. Of course, the president is speaking tonight. And we're hoping for a, a, a drop on the restrictions. We can't wait to have you back. And I believe that this is the change of the season now that we've come through this tremendous stage, particularly in Johannesburg. Uh, even as a church, there's, there's been a lot of pain, even this week. We've had to uh, bury some people, and it's been very painful. And I want to say a very big thank you, particularly to our pastors and our staff that have helped to carry families through at this time. And I know that there's, there's struggles happening everywhere. Every single day I've had calls for, for prayer. Some people are in hospital right now. We're going to pray at the end of the service. We're going to take communion together. If you're sick, we're going to trust God for healing today. At the same time, there's also wonderful things happening. It's wonderful to see how the body has come together and how love has been shown and meals have been made people. So we thank God for some of the most wonderful people in Gauteng, right here at Axe Church, showing love and kindness. And then of course this week we were able to send a large truck down to Durban just to support what is happening there, support the local churches that, that uh, relate to us. And also we are going to be sending another truck this week, thank you to Acts of Love, and we're going to be supporting more families. And so we look forward to that as well. I believe that we're coming to the end of this difficult season. It kind of feels like we've been in a war. But I believe that we're coming to the end of the season. I want to encourage you today. Don't lose hope. Don't, don't let go. Hold on. All that you've persevered for is about to come through. All that we've prayed for is about to manifest. Don't lose hope. Dear family, dear person, whoever you are today, don't lose hope in God. Trust in Him. Trust in the Lord. I believe we're still going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We shall partake of what God has for us in Jesus' mighty name. So I bless you. Speak life to you. I also want to thank you for your generosity and your support and for your generous giving to Acts Church. So Father, we bless this giving. We thank you, Lord, every need is met in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, I want to read a scripture to you, and I'm going to talk to you today about raising the standard, particularly when the floods come in and destroy what, what we have. And there's many floods happening right now in different ways. You know, there's physical floods, there's spiritual floods. But Isaiah 59 verse 19, it says this, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. This is a prophetic statement from the prophet Isaiah, and he was prophesying the Christ that was to come. That Jesus would come and he would raise a standard against the flood that the enemy had brought in particularly starting there way back in Genesis chapter 1, 
Satan came into the garden, he brought a flood of destruction as he turned man's hearts against God. And the prophet says now that there's one coming. His name is Jesus Christ. And he would raise a standard. He will halt the effects of the flood that had come against mankind. And so the flood of destruction, you know, over the last couple of weeks, just even in our own nation, there was a flood of destruction two weeks ago. And when a flood comes, in, in a moment, in a night, what might have taken somebody a lifetime to build can be swept away. And then we've seen in this last week floods in Germany, in Europe, in India, in China, and the destruction that came. And it's amazing the power of a flood, that it can take a building that is set on a foundation that might have even taken years to build and sweep it away in a moment of time. We see in these floods vehicles going down the river as if they have no power to stop themselves. Those one-ton vehicles floating down like just little leaves down the river. That's the power of a flood when it comes into our lives. So it comes into a nation. It came upon the world in a spiritual sense when Lucifer caused men to fall and we lost relationship with God. Floods come in relationships and in a moment, in just one argument, what's taken you a whole year to build in relationship can be lost in five minutes. Floods have come into our families where loved ones have gone, brought destruction and hurt and pain and, and emotions that are hurtful. It's the power of a flood. But we have a promise today. The Bible says that when the floods come in, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord will raise a standard against that flood. And today I want to speak to you about the standard of God. What is the standard of God? A couple of things happened in the Garden of Eden when the first flood came against man. Number one is that two important things were lost. That was God's presence and God's provision. God's presence and God's provision. It's interesting that in the garden, every day in the cool of the day, God would come and spend time with Adam and Eve. That was His presence. The second thing is that in the garden, there was absolute provision. There was nothing that Adam had to do. They simply went to the trees that were in there and they ate of those trees. There was life from those fruit. That's provision. So two of the most important things in our lives came and was destroyed in the first flood against man. That Jesus Christ has come to restore. That is His presence and His provision. Just say that. Just say that just softly in your own words. Presence, provision. And I want to speak into that today because I'm going to trust God for provision. One of the things that a flood does, and I was just watching an interview with the floods in Germany, how a woman is just holding a couple of things in her hands, and she's saying, this is all that I have left. See, many times floods come into our lives, and they, they bring poverty. They bring lack. They bring loss. What we have built gets destroyed. That's not provision. Holding in your two hands what's taken your whole life to build when it's been swept away with a flood. So I want to speak into provision. If you're trusting God for a job, you're needing breakthrough, you're needing a miracle there. We're going to speak about provision today. Another thing happened when the first flood came in the book of Genesis is that we, our authority was swept away. Number three, that we were made subject to the powers of darkness. And the last point that I want to mention today is that we were caused to walk in curses and not in blessings but Jesus came ladies and gentlemen I want to tell you Jesus came when that cross was raised up 2,000 years ago it was a raising of a standard and God wants us to walk in the the standard that he has provided for us see a standard means what is normal what is normal God has what is normal for us as believers 
We're going to take a stand today and we're going to believe God. So let me start today with speaking to you about provision. If you have a need, you trust in God. Maybe you've been retrenched. Maybe you trust in God for an increase in some area of your life. I want to speak faith into your heart today and talk to you about this provision. It is interesting that when Jesus came, he mentions in Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, when he's talking about prayer, he says, pray like this. He says that our daily bread, we can pray for our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, Jesus wasn't saying only pray for bread. But you see, bread was a simple, a, 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 um, you know, um, a type of the basic necessities. That's how Israel survived. They survived on bread. And it spoke of provision. That's what the bread spoke about. When Jesus said pray for bread, he was saying pray for your provision. And it's interesting that in the Old Testament, that when they left, when Israel left Egypt, that it was in Egypt that God showed His tremendous care for the people. When He provided the manna from heaven. You remember the story how they began to complain to Moses and complain to God that it was better to go back to Egypt there was bread in Egypt. There was food in Egypt. But here we are in the desert. And it's difficult. It's a difficult life. And they were moving around. They didn't have time to grow their crops. They didn't have a pick and pay and a Woolworths to go to. They had to carry provisions with them. And it was difficult. And they began to complain to God and said, It was better that we stayed in Egypt. And God says, I am going to cause the heavens to rain bread. I love that the Lord says, I'm going to rain bread upon you. Have you noticed that when spring comes and you try to water your grass and you water it, nothing changes. It's almost like the water just soaks through the grass into the ground and you still have brown grass. But when the rain comes and the heavens open, then that nitrogen and all the goodness of heaven rains upon your, your grass the next day it's turning green already it's amazing that when the heavens rain there's tremendous nutrients and God said I'm going to rain bread upon you what he was saying is my bread will sustain you this bread was so full of nutrients it was all that they needed for the whole day and the Bible says it was like wafers that tasted like honey this fine mist that they would gather and they would bake it as bread was so nutritious. It was heaven's bread rained upon them that will sustain them and keep them. Do you know that for 40 years while they were in the wilderness, six days a week, the bread was there. The provision was there. 40 years. No pick and pay can provide like that, like God provided. 40 years, six days a week. And on the sixth day, they gathered as twice as much as what they needed for the Sabbath. I want you to know that our God loves us. And if He loved Israel in a wilderness, even though they walked against Him and were rebellious, and they, they had no faith in God, but God's faithfulness never changed. Every morning they woke up, there was provision for the day. Isn't that a wonderful sign, a wonderful type? That God was saying, my standard is that you can pray for daily bread. It's interesting that even in our modern day language, we call the person that earns the money in the house, the breadwinner. He's the breadwinner. What is it speaking about? It's speaking about provision. So God wants to be the provision in our life, our daily bread. Give me this day our daily bread. Come on, somebody. It's time that we, we pray a new prayer and say, Lord, stop complaining about not having provision. Raise the standard. 
raise the standard in your house and lift up your hands. Come on, let's do it right now. Lift up your hands and say, Father in heaven, I thank you, my Father, that you would rain bread upon my life. Provide for me this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Your Father in heaven is faithful. I was talking to Pastor Sam this week and he told me such a wonderful testimony. And I asked him if I could share it with you. As you know, they've relocated to Cape Town and renting a house. And, and in this house is a little place where he's made a study. But it's, it's an open room. And he says, you know, Pastor, I just said to the Lord, I really would like a door on this little space so that I could just have a little bit of privacy so that I can pray and worship. And then a little thought came to his heart to just send the landlord a little text. And you know, that's not easy when you've just moved into a house and you're already demanding that changes are made. That's how... This is how the miracle begins. Let me tell you something about the provision of God. You see, Israel didn't need to make the manna. They only needed to collect it. You don't need to make money. You only need to collect it. You don't have to make provision. You just have to go and collect it. That's how God works. God's not going to work with lazy people. You know, it, it wasn't like they could just have a tent and the manna would crawl into the bowl and bake itself. God doesn't work with lazy people. What He says is, go and collect what I've prov provided for you. And it starts with an idea. That's how God works. You're busy praying. You're busy meditating. God puts an idea in your heart. And this little thought came into Pastor Samuel's heart. Just send your landlord a text. He sent him a text. I really would like a door to have privacy. Straight away came the message. I have people around the corner. They're coming now to measure up. Two days later, they arrive, put in the door. And that was just to me a little sign of daily bread. You see, He hears the desires of our hearts and He provides for us. Why don't you just continually ask Him every day. Say, Father, thank you. Show me where I need to collect today. God's going to provide for us, church. God's going to provide. We're coming through stronger. We're coming through greater. We're coming through more prosperous. You're coming through with a business. You're coming through with a job. Don't worry, husband. You're going to take care of your family. You're going to take care of your children. Fear not. I know the one who says, I am the daily bread. Ask your Father in heaven. I love it. I love it. It's one of the first prayers in the whole list. That we can go to God and say, Lord, I have a need. Provide for me my daily bread. It was interesting to me that Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. That means he must be taken daily. See, bread is daily. You have to eat daily for strength. Psalm 27 says, that He is the strength of my life. So take of Him daily. Every day, just raise your hands to heaven and enjoy His presence. Just say, I love you, I adore you, I worship you. And when you do that daily, you are getting strengthened for the walk that is ahead. You see, when, when Egypt, when they were in the wilderness, when Israel was in the wilderness, they wanted to go back to Egypt because they were hungry. You see, when, when you're not walking in the daily presence of Jesus, you want to go back to the ways of Egypt. But when you are filled with Jesus, you have strength to get to the promised land. Daily bread, daily presence, daily worship, daily read your Bible. When you get out of your bed, just lift your hands and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. I love your presence. I love who you are. Satisfy me today. You know, the scripture says this it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that beautiful? Just when you take of the daily bread of His presence, He's going to give us desires, His desires. 
and we're going to walk in those desires and we're going to walk in provision and we're going to walk in his blessings what does it mean when it says delight yourself in the lord i believe it means this remember god's great love for you just meditate upon that i love the story of pastor samuel i love the story of the small miracles where we simply whisper to the father and we remember his love for us how he was there sometimes we need to remember his faithfulness how he was there in the past say lord you've been so faithful in my life that's how david overcame he says i remember you helped me overcome the bear and you helped me overcome the lion so when you face the next giant he was just thinking about the lion he said god was faithful god God loves me. He's never left me. He will provide an overcoming spirit for me today. And he looked at that giant and he overcame. How do we do that? By remembering, delighting ourselves in the Lord. Remember his love. I love that song today. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. But another thing happened in the garden is that we lost authority. Adam was put in the garden. He was there just naming the animals. He was sorting things out. He walked in authority. He walked as a ruler on the earth. And when he, when he gave up his authority, he lost it. He gave it to, to Satan. But Jesus came to raise the standard. And it says this in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah, church. What we lost in the garden, Jesus gave us back at the cross. Authority. Authority. That is why we can speak with authority and that's why we pray with authority. So how do we take authority? Matthew 18, 18 says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, we, we don't go around just binding. I bind my boss and I bind and I loose the Ferrari in my life. I'm not talking about that kind of, that kind of nonsensical prayers. But what I do know, is that what he is bound, I can bind. What he has loosed, I can loose. And so I loose healing and I bind sickness. I loose prosperity and I bind the spirit of poverty. I loose peace and I bind chaos in my life. I have the authority. Come on, stand up in your room. Grab somebody by the hand and we're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lose healing. We lose healing. We lose healing, Lord, in our houses. We bind COVID-19. Come on, take authority in your husband. Take authority for your wife. Wife, take authority for your husband. We bind COVID-19. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we lose prosperity over Acts Church families right now. And we bind the spirit of poverty. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you have the authority. The Lord says it's His desire that you work. You must go and gather. You must go and collect. So don't sit at home. Say, Father, I lose now a job in my life. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody, you're getting a phone call tomorrow. I lose that job to you in Jesus' mighty name. That's the authority that we have. Where there's chaos, I lose peace. Just raise your hands wherever you are. Say, Father, I thank you for peace in my house right now. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's be seated, everybody. That's the authority. That's the standard. 
has for our lives. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to just move on. One of the things that happened to Adam when the flood of destruction came in Genesis chapter 1 is that he no longer walked in the blessings, but he walked in the curse. And evidently, the garden had a hedge right around it. And when they were taken out of the garden, there was an angel put at the gate. Nobody came in. Adam couldn't come back in. And for the first time, he had to go and he had to labor. And he had to sow in the ground. The Bible teaches us that when he, when he went to sow, that there were thorns there. There were stones there. In other words, it was difficult. See, when the floods come and carry these houses away from their foundations and whole villages are destroyed, Even uh, we were watching that program, is it Chernobyl, where they had the, the nuclear destruction for 30 kilometers, even to this day, 30 years later, just destruction, nobody living there. So it's difficult. Can't restore something like that. Some villages will never be restored, never be rebuilt when the flood has come. But I believe that Jesus does it differently. And in Job chapter 1 verse 10, I think we have a picture of the standard that God has for us. Listen to what it says in Job chapter 1 verse 10. And Satan himself has to say this about Job and God's goodness to Job. And this is a picture of God's goodness to you. He says, have you not made a hedge around him? And I like that word hedge because it was in the garden of Eden that he was, there was a hedge in the garden. And here we see that God has put Job in the garden. May God put us back in the garden today. May God put us back in the hedge. He says, have you, have you not made a hedge around him? and around his household and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. This is actually Satan speaking to, to God. He's saying, You've blessed him. You've hedged him. You've increased him. His possessions on the land have increased. And God was saying, yeah, that's my, that's my boy key. That's my son. My hand is upon him. My blessing is upon him. What else can you expect? Because in his presence, there's increase. Where there's bread, where the bread is, there's blessing. Now I love this. He says, you have, you've put a hedge around him. So I, I want you to do this with me. There in your home. Just let's just start small. So he's put a hedge around him. Just do this. You know, when, when, somebody's, when somebody's prospering physically, they say, he's prospering. You know, how much do you want to prosper? need to sometimes use your hands a little bit because I'm not saying God I don't want just the hedge around me look what he says and I hedge around the family but I, I around everything that he has come on somebody by faith just come on just just say God you see what he was saying is God has enough not just to bless you he's gonna bless your family your children. You're going to bless your employees. Everything that you haven't touched is going to expand. Come on. Just open. Don't be ashamed. I'm just saying, God, just hedge. Come on. Open the hedge, Lord, as much as possible. Just extend me. Expand me. In Jesus' mighty name. 
you have blessed the work of his hands. Father, we pray today, everything we touch shall be blessed. Whatever I put my hand to do shall be blessed. And his possessions have increased in the land. Now, I know sometimes we're, we're ashamed. We're ashamed to pray like that. But I want you to know that this is the standard. This is the standard. Increase. Somebody say increase. Increase me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And then lastly today, as I was sharing with you, some of those villages that are washed away by a flood will never, ever be rebuilt. But God... God at the cross, He renewed and He restored what was destroyed. I love Lamentations chapter 5 verse 21. It says this, turn us back to you, Lord, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. And I'm going to prophesy over you and I'm going to say to you, church, that what has been swept away and what's been lost, God is going to restore to you in Jesus' name. That joy is going to be restored to you. Work is going to be restored to you. Peace is going to be restored to you. You say, it's never going to be the same. I want you to know that Jesus is in the job of restoration. Just as an old vintage car found in a field rusted and broken is taken into the careful hands of a craftsman who has a vision and he begins he begins to work on this this car even though it is rusted and broken but he pours his love in there and he sacrifices and his hands touch this vehicle and as the time goes on restoration is seen to the point that you would not even known, have known that that vehicle came out of the field. I want you to know that at the cross, Jesus took us in the palm of His hands. And His gentle love is beginning to move in our hearts and our lives. And we're going to look a year from now. People won't even know that you were in the field. What is that? It's called restoration. It's called renewal. It's called the rebuilding of the Holy Spirit. That's the power that God has in our lives to renew us and to restore us. Can we stand one more time in our homes? Just begin to just raise your hands and just look to the Lord and just begin to love on Him and just begin to meditate upon Him and just begin to delight in Him. Let Him be your bread of sustenance today. Let Him be the restoration of your soul today. Some of you feel that you've lost so much with God and backslidden that you can never make it right again. I want you to know that God is bringing a new season of restoration and a new, a new open door is coming for you. Step into that new season. Don't miss this opportunity to say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Restore me. Come on, if you're a backslider today and you're coming back to Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Just say, Heavenly Father, Thank you for touching me today. I sense that by the Holy Spirit, you are drawing me near. I respond right now. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for rejecting you. And I open my heart right now. And I come towards you. Embrace me once again. And I thank you. You will restore me. You will renew me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, everyone. Come on, let's raise our hands. I want us to sing this song. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And just begin to delight in Him. I know that there's pain in many families today. Would you just raise your hands? Let the healing balm of the Lord just come upon you.
Let's sing it one more time. Fill our homes. Holy Spirit, fall in our lounge. family would you take your communion and just bless it next church have a blessed sunday and we can't wait to see you next week god bless you amen, amen.